Hey folks, a lot of people are getting the uh, shockwave crash errors and plugging crash errors when doing, specifically when you're doing print then cut functions. That seems to bring it on more. And there's a couple reasons that's happening. I had two things that I came across this weekend that I helped folks with and wanted to share this with everyone because I think this will cover the vast majority of people who are having this problem. And I want to take time to explain it to you and uh, then I'll show you on the computer how you get around this kind of thing. And it, it's not a necessarily a limitation with design space, it has more to do with the processing power of the computer combined with, um, I, I don't want to sound uh, harsh here, but lack of knowledge of file sizes and image sizes. So if you're aware of the file sizes you're working with and the sizes of the images, you're a lot less likely to have this happen in one case. The other case, it's a matter of how to edit the images. So when you, uh, the first case that I ran into was someone was importing images and trying to print out a whole sheet of stickers. And it sounds pretty simple. The images look pretty simple. Uh, so when I had them email me one of the images to look at, what I discovered when I opened it was, and I opened this in Photoshop to look at the file size, was it was a full 8.5 by 11 page at 300 dpi. That's dots per inch. Um, as a comparison, when you look at things on your computer monitor, most images made for web use, for viewing on the web, are only 72 to 96 dpi. Print quality is generally 300 to 600 dpi or higher. Now what that means, dots per inch, is if you have one inch here to here, in between here you could fit 300 dots and they would be very close jammed together. However, 72 dpi would be spread out. So what happens when you resize that image, and this is why SVGs are important as opposed to JPEGs and PNGs a lot of times, is if you resize that, those dots get farther apart, and then your image starts to get fuzzy and blocky. Now, what happens on this particular case, when these images were imported, they were cleaned up using the magic wand tool in Design Space, and uh, the sizes of these images that I'll show you on the computer, I can't remember exact, but they were something like, you know, like I said, it was eight and a half inches. But when I look at the number of pixels, it was something like 2,500 by uh, probably 3,500 pixels in that image. That's a very large image. That's a pretty high resolution. These were images they had purchased online, and they're clip art images. And as you'll see, it's a fairly, fairly simple image, but they make them large like this so that they assume the person using them are going to know how to properly downsize. So what I did was I resized the image. I actually cleaned it up outside of Photoshop and imported it and sent it to her. And she said she was able to even actually do 96 in one job, and it worked perfectly. So the other case that we had was a person had an image and I can't remember, I think it was a dog or something that was in the image. And then in the background was some shading. And they used the magic wand tool in Design Space to remove that background. And that's not a wise thing to do. The, the magic wand tool in Design Space is good for removing something like a solid white background, but not so much if they're shading. And what happens is it, because they're shading, it leaves all these little pixels these little dots around the screen and when you import it and you move on to that next screen where it shows you the red <coughs> excuse me the red lines where it's going to cut all of these little red lines and dots are individual cuts so they had just a ton of little cuts there and <coughs> the design space was unable to handle that as far as prepping for the cut and it was causing the plug in to time out so i'll move over to the computer and i'll show you these as examples and how to get around this all right, so the first example I was showing you is this clip art image the person sent, and they were uh, importing this into Design Space using the magic wand to delete the white space around it, and then trying to print out a sheet of stickers uh, using this image. And this image appears to be fairly simple. It's basic colors, you know, maybe eight or ten colors, and not a uh, terribly complicated image. However, when you look at the properties of this image, this was a clip art she had purchased online, and in order for them to make this usable to everyone, if you look at the details, again, I right-clicked on the file and went to Properties, 
and I'm looking at the details tab and you can see this is a 2550 by 3300 pixel image at 300 dots per inch and so and it, it also has a bit depth of 24 colors so uh, that means this is a fairly complicated high detail image and the file size indicates that a little bit but it's kind of tough to sometimes to give a file size because uh, for example this image is only it's less than 400 kilobytes in size but it's a fairly large file size for the type of image it is. So you kind of have to understand that relationship before you can really go by that file size. So I'm looking more at the resolution. And so this file is a fairly large file. Now there's a couple ways we can uh, adjust this. One, we can go into Photoshop. So if we bring this image into Photoshop, we can do a couple things with it. One, we can crop the image down. And I always recommend using an editor like Photoshop or Pixlr or something to prep the images before you bring them into Design Space. But it's not absolutely necessary, but it does make for a higher quality image that is a cleaner image in most cases. And so then I can use the Magic Eraser tool to erase the um, white space around it. And then if I look at my image size properties, uh, you can see I still have a pretty large image. Now this person was printing very small stickers that were uh, maybe about an inch by one inch or so. So we can adjust the size of this image down considerably to about 500 by 500. And if you notice, I'm only at 16% zoom. So if I zoom in, this is still a fairly large image. That's 100% zoom. So then we can save this as a PNG file. And now if I look at the file size properties of this file and compare it to the original, you see this is the JPEG, this is the PNG, so this is the new file. If I look at details, uh, we'll first look at the file sizes. Uh, if you look at the file sizes, I am less than 10% of the original file size, or just a little bit over 10% of the original file size. And if we look at the file details, we'll see that it is a much smaller image at 500 by 477 versus 2550 by 3300. So uh, that file was able to be imported and pulled right into Design Space with minimal effort and was able to be cut. I think she said she did a sheet of 96 where she wasn't even able to do 20 before that without the plug-in timing out. Now the next image that we uh, encountered was this image of minions. Someone wanted to do a print and cut of this image. And as you can see, there is a lot of shading around this image. So when we do an upload image, we choose complex image. And we zoom out a little bit. And we use the magic wand to erase to see that it leaves some additional things behind. And I'll click all these areas and delete them. And now it looks like I've got a pretty good clean image there. However, uh, I want to point out a couple of things. One, on this screen, there's an advanced options here. And one of the most important ones is the color tolerance. And then you can turn this up to get a better uh, grasp of the shading that you're wanting to delete. So along the edges or any kind of shading, uh, if we, whatever pixel you click on, it's going to go, uh, you know, think of it this way, if it's 16 shades difference uh, from the one that you're on, uh, if you increase that a lot of times, I mean, you, if it's a good solid image that's maybe black and white or something, I recommend you know, increasing this up to about 30 or 40 and you'll get a much cleaner, sharper edge on it. So when we click continue and we look at this, we'll see all these little red dots all the way around this. Every one of these little red dots is actually a circle or a, an enclosed area of some type that is a cut. So this is a very, very complicated image to cut. There are, are probably thousands of cuts in this one image. And if you put this into Design Space and try to cut it, it is going to have a lot of difficulty with it. And so what I recommend doing always when an image like this is to remove the background uh, using another program. And I have another program, another video that I'll put a link on the screen now that shows you how to cleanly remove backgrounds. You need to have a good, clean background removal with a good clean separation between the image and the transparent area 
for it to cut. So when you import it, you should see a single red colored line around all the cut areas and uh, not all these little pixels and dots and things. Uh, both of these issues, the clean up with the magic wand tool here, as well as the large file sizes I was just showing you, um, have been proven. I've worked, went through this with a few different people now to show them why their system is having difficulties with print cut. This also brings on uh, the issue even more so when you have a slower processor in your computer. I don't care how new your computer is. You can buy a new computer today that's, that's slower than my laptop, which is five years old. So uh, there's a lot that goes into this. Uh, if you have any questions or anything, you can feel free to private message me or send me an email at troy at troyyoung.com. And hopefully this has been helpful to you. If you're interested in my support services or consulting services, please visit my website at www.troyyoung.com for most current pricing information. Additionally, you can go to patreon.com slash Troy Young to help support my channel. Hopefully my video has been helpful to you. If it has been, please subscribe to my channel and by all means, please share my videos.